Hello and welcome to The Beef Edge, the Chagas Beef Podcast, for all your latest news, information and advice for Irish beef farmers. I'm Kat Trinigan and on this week's episode, I'm joined by Chagas advisor Alan Nolan from County Mayo to review the key messages for suckler farmers at Beef 2022. Alan, you're very welcome. There's a huge amount of information available for farmers operating a suckler system at Beef 2022. What are the key messages on the day? Look, at, I suppose, Catherine, the, the overall theme of the day was sustainable beef production, uh, which means, uh, really, Catherine, that it has to be sustainable for the farmer in terms of uh, the financial return that the farmer is getting and the money he's making out of the system. But the other aspect that we hear a lot about is uh, the environmental uh, sustainability. So really, whatever suckler system that a farmer is involved in in the future, they need to be efficient uh, in that they produce as little greenhouse gases as possible uh, from the beef that we produce. So Catherine, there was, that was the key theme of the day um, as farmers moved around on the various different stands. So when it comes to looking at suckler cow production uh, in the future, we have to be hitting uh, those uh, key performance indicators um, that uh, reduces greenhouse gas emissions. Alan, there was a big focus on the day in relation to the suckler cow. Yes, that's right, Catherine. And look, at there was a, a big talk there about um, areas that you can improve and improve in the reproduct- reproductive performance of the cow. So starting off there that a farmer needed to have a defined calving period, um, whether that's six weeks or eight weeks, whether it's in the autumn or the spring, but that it was a d- defined calving period there. And um, there was also the area there that when we're talking about sustainability, we need to call out our poor performers or cows that aren't performing, producing a good calf or cows that aren't producing a calf per cow per year. Uh, The body condition of cows was critically important coming up to the uh, breeding season uh, that they're on a rising plane of nutrition and that farmers have good heat detection. Any farmers that's involved in AI, that they have some system in place uh, for heat detection using restricted suckling so that we have good uh, reproductive performance within our herd. That's great, Alan. I suppose they're all key to the actual key performance indicators that farmers should be targeting from their ICBF reports. What were kind of the targets outlined on the day? Yeah, well, there was a a board there, Catherine, at the very beginning, and there was four key performance indicators that were used there. Um, The cast per cow per year, which again, Catherine, is a figure that's very readily available uh, to farmers in their calving report uh, from ICBF. There was also a look there at the age at first calving, uh, the six week calving uh, rate and uh, the calving interval. And there was some interesting information produced there uh, given by Mark McGee on the day where he was looking at uh, the herd targets versus um, a a herd that's not performing or not hitting the targets there. And I suppose the the overall key message there was that uh, from a financial point of view, the farmer that was hitting those targets was making more money, uh, but it was also uh, producing less greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, And this was most obvious when increasing the age at first calving. Uh, There was a massive decrease there in the net margin per head. Uh, and this reflects the cost of carrying an unproductive animal for another year. So I suppose the, the key message there, Catherine, was to know the target figures uh, and know where you are as a farmer are at. And again, as I said, most of these figures are easily uh, available there and that you should be putting a plan in place to reach these targets. Uh, and it will help to increase farm profit while also helping uh, to reduce uh, the greenhouse gas emissions that are produced uh, on your farm. Most definitely, Alan, and I suppose topical at this time of year, really, there was a huge discussion on the day in relation to how farmers should narrow down the selection of replacement females, even at this stage in advance of next spring. Yeah, there was, Catherine, I suppose that was the stand that I was involved in on the day. And look at what we looked at on the day. It was a a two step selection process, really. It was a visual assessment and then you were looking at the genetic merit. So I suppose on the visual assessment, that was something that farmers always had in the past. And you were looking at uh, areas there that were important in the past and still remain very important. The areas such as docility. Um, we always hear every year about uh, accidents or fatalities or near misses. So docility in animals is very important. We had to look there at a uh, confirmation and uh, not having animals too heavily muscled so that you wouldn't be running into calving difficulty. Uh, we looked at functionality um, so that heifers would have good feet, good legs. Uh, and here in the west of Ireland, where I operate, uh, heifers and cows spend a lot of time in slatted sheds. So it's important to have good feet so that you have good longevity, longevity uh, in your suckler cows. Uh, and also looking there that a cow has good pelvic structure so that uh, she has good calving ability. 
Uh, and the weight was the final part of that visual assessment too, that heifers are hitting uh, their target weight uh, for age and that they're on target for breeding at 15 months. So Catherine, that was the first part of it, which was a visual assessment. And we had two farmers that went through that on the day, Wesley Brown and Sam Pierce, uh, and gave uh, how they go through a visual assessment of heifers. Uh, the second part of that was looking at the gen genetic uh, merit uh, of the animals and what's available there. And I suppose the first part of that is looking at the replacement index. Uh, and that index, look at, it's there to be used. Uh, it's there to identify uh, low maintenance suckler cows that are fertile, that have good calving ability, uh, good milking ability, and yet they can breed animals with good carcass traits. So look at, you select the highest index females there. Uh, and the figures are shown that the five stars are uh, outperforming one stars. Uh, in this uh, replacement index. You look there to see is the heifers genotyped, that their parentage is verified and that they've good uh, high reliability. And you're looking then, uh, Catherine, that there is balanced traits uh, so that uh, you have good milk and fertility, as I said, but that there's also good carcass traits there uh, as beef production is very important out of the animals there that we, uh, that we get. So look at Catherine, we finished up by looking at four heifers on the day. Uh, to show the, the audience there how you would narrow down those four heifers and how you would pick two out of it uh, using that two steps step process of a visual assessment and then looking at uh, the figures that we had uh, available on the day in terms of the replacement index, the carcass weight, the milk and the calving interval. So there was great interest in that uh, on the day, Catherine. Over the next few weeks, Alan, farmers will be weighing calves from the spring herds. What messages from the open day have you for listeners on this? I suppose, yes, Catherine, look at the most important thing, uh, because the majority of farmers are in the beep scheme, is uh, that they meet all the beep requirements. So just very quickly on that, Catherine, it's important that they use a registered scales, uh, that they weigh the weigh the calf and the cow uh, separately on the same day uh, before the calf is weaned, and then that they submit uh, the weights to ICBF uh, within seven days. Um, I suppose on the day, uh, Catherine, we had a, a broader talk especially around the whole area of weaning efficiency. Uh, and that tied in again with the overall theme of uh, sustainability. So I suppose we were trying to look there and measure the suckler cow performance. And it's often a question that's asked, Catherine, what is a good cow? Um, so what we're doing here and what farmers get when they get their uh, weaning report each autumn is that they have the, the, the calf's weight and the cow's weight. The calf weight then is adjusted to a, a 200 day weight. And uh, this uh, is expressed, this calf 200 day uh, weight is expressed as a percentage of the cow's weight. Okay, and what you get then is we would like to have a target figure of uh, 42%. That's a weaning efficiency target of 42% or over. Um, and on the day we showed uh, cows that we had a selection of four cows and calves. Uh, one that was uh, high efficiency, which had over uh, had 62%. Uh, we had two in between then that were 43% and 49%, and then a low efficiency cow that um, only had 38%. So look at Catherine, it's a way there of finding out the least efficient cows in your herd that again, you can, um, I suppose really you'd be looking at culling those cows going forward. And we must remember Catherine, this is the fourth year now that we'll be weighing cows and calves. So there's a big bank of information building up there for farmers. Uh, if they look back over the reports over the last few years, uh, it's, they should be able to pick out which are the most efficient cows. They're the type of cows that they should be breeding off. Uh, and the least efficient ones are the ones that you're looking to call. In an ideal world, uh, Catherine, you'd have a smaller type cow with a heavy calf, but that's not always the way it works. And it's not about, uh, we'll say down in the heavy cow. If you have a heavy cow that's producing a good heavy calf as well, well, she's probably pretty efficient. But what we don't want is a very heavy cow producing a light calf. Um, because she's uh, very inefficient there. And I suppose that's the type of stuff that uh, farmers need to be looking at now when they are weighing their cows and calves. Uh, they need to go back and look at those figures and make use uh, of the figures when they're making decisions uh, on culling and um, going forward. That's great, Alan. And weaning will be taking place on farms in the next few months. What tips were there for farmers on the day? Well, I suppose the overall theme when it comes to weaning, Catherine, is uh, that you're trying uh, to reduce stress. Um, at weaning, it can be a very stressful time for the calf because you're breaking that bond between the, the cow and the calf and you're pulling the calf away from the cow. So when you have a lot of stress, then the, the calf is more susceptible to disease and, and particularly pneumonia. So look, at it, there was just a good bit of information there on general uh, good practice uh, that we'll say the dosing and vaccination that you do that a month pre-weaning. Um, that you 
we in a month pre-housing as well, that you don't combine a number of jobs together. So in other words, you don't be castrating an animal at weaning as well too. So you're, all you're trying to do here, Catherine, is reduce stress. Uh, there was a look there at uh, creep grazing where you're allowing the calves to have access to the breast uh, grass on the farm and giving them access uh, ahead of the cows. It helps to reduce that uh, maternal bond that is there with the cow. Uh, and meal can also be fed uh, in troughs um, so that all calves are getting equal access uh, to meal. And meal is an important part of the weaning process as well. I know it's dear this year, but if you're just feeding a, a one kilo of meal per head per day, uh, there's a good conversion rate at that age when weanings are young. So this meal should be introduced at least one month uh, uh, pre-weaning. And another process that uh, was outlined on the day is the gradual weaning process where you remove cows from the paddock uh, and not the calves, uh, and that you do it in at least two groups. So you're, you're uh, taking away a number of cows first. Uh, what that means is that their calves that are left behind, uh, they're a little bit more settled when there's still a few cows uh, left in the group. So look, at it. it was a few tips like that, Catherine, on general uh, good practice uh, for weaning, which was all about trying to reduce stress uh, in the calf. And I suppose for listeners that will be calving cows on the other side in the coming weeks, Alan, what advice were there for those farmers? Yeah, well, in the autumn calving, uh, look at from my experience, Catherine, uh, a lot of the farmers that use autumn calving, they use a, a good bit of AI in their system as well, too, because it suits their system. I suppose the first thing to say is that it is a higher cost system. Um, so there needs to be a good performance there and a premium price uh, is, is essential. Um, so look at some of the important thing there when it comes to autumn calving is that you're always looking to monitor uh, the body condition score of, uh, of the cow and watching it over the system. And there is various advantages and disadvantages to uh, autumn calving. Um, I suppose one of the main advantages, as I said there, that I've seen, Catherine, is that it allows uh, more use of uh, AI, especially on fragmented farms down here in the west of Ireland. Uh, if you want to, you can wean calves out of the shed. Uh, in the springtime. Uh, Weanlands can be sold earlier in the summer, which means sometimes there that there is a premium price uh, before the main surge of Weanlands comes out. And you can have a heavier weighted sale. Uh, those uh, autumn born Weanlands, when they go out to grass in the springtime, they're better able to utilize grass uh, and you get some uh, very cheap gain at that time of the year. Um, and there is, in general, then more grass in the animal's diet. I suppose just look at some of the disadvantages, Catherine, is that there is danger there of summer mastitis, and that's something that farmers have to be aware of and, and be looking out for. And there is a higher winter feed cost. Uh, you will require a higher DMD silage, uh, and there is probably a... Um, more winter space required as well because of the cabin uh, indoor. So look, there's some of the things to take into account if you are going down an autumn cabin um, route. So I suppose the key message there is that you really need good performance and you do need to be getting a premium price there uh, to offset the extra cost that's involved in the system. Alan, the fact the open day was held in Chagas Grange, there was great interest among farmers on the day in the research herds. Yeah, that's right, Catherine. Look, at, um, there was great interest there in all the, the various research herds, the Derry Patrick herd, the maternal herd, and the Newford uh, herd um, that's down in Athenry. Um, so look at all the performance figures of the three herds over the last number of years were available on the day on boards. And um, there was talks there and advisors available to and researchers available uh, to outline how the performance has gone over the last number of years. And Catherine, all that information is available on the booklet there that um, farmers will be able to access if they get uh, the booklet um, or they will be able to get it online. Thanks, Alan. And obviously herd health was a critical aspect of the suckler system, Alan. What are the key messages on the day? Yeah, look, at, there was a lot on herd health uh, on the day, uh, Catherine, again, which is hard to summarise, but uh, there was a lot there on the antimicrobial usage, which we all know is going to get uh, bigger over the years uh, and a push there to vaccinate animals uh, more to reduce the need uh, uh, for antibiotics and to only give antibiotics to, to animals under strict uh, veterinary supervision. Um, so there was a lot of talk about that. And again, uh, Catherine, all that information is available on the booklet uh, from the day. There's a big day, Alan, for the future beef farmers, particularly that this was the first public event that farmers and members of the public got to meet the future beef farmers from across the country. And there was great discussion among them. 
Yeah, well, look at Catherine, that's the new Chagas uh, Sukla program, and there's over 20 farmers there from different areas of the country operating different uh, Sukla systems, and it's a new five-year program, so look at it, it's a big commitment on behalf of the farmers uh, for the next five years, and um, yeah, they were all there, most of those uh, future beef farmers were there on the day, uh, willing to talk to other farmers and um, uh, that, that arrived and look at those farms, uh, Catherine, all have their key performance indicators there for the next number of years. They'll be trying to hit all their uh, fertility targets, trying to have good average daily gain in their stock. They'll be looking at there for those of them that are slaughtering animals, they'll be looking to reduce the age of slaughter. Uh, they'll be trying to keep uh, their output in terms of their kgs of beef uh, sold up, Catherine, as they're going forward, uh, but also then trying to reduce uh, the greenhouse gas emissions on that uh, on their farms. Uh, so they'll be really looking at their soil fertility, their grassland management, uh, and ways that they can uh, improve silage quality, uh, and will also be implementing a herd health plan. So look, at, it'll be a whole farm program there looking to uh, tie in again with some of the areas that was the theme of the day uh, in Grange the last day, which is to try and make it sustainable for these farmers that they in profit, at the profit levels on their farms, that they'll try to increase it, uh, but also trying to um, improve the environmental sustainability uh, that will be on those farms. So look at Catherine, that'll be interesting to see how these farmers get on over the next five years. Future beef farmer Michael Biggins from Mayo actually participated in the forum at the end of the day, Ellen and there was a huge crowd gathered to wrap up the event with a detailed discussion moderated by Ivan Yates, and that's available for farmers that missed it to tune in on the Chagas YouTube channel. Thanks very much, Alan. Thanks, Catherine. That's all for this week's episode, and my thanks to Alan for joining me on the show. You can catch up on all other shows and interviews from the Beef Edge podcast on the Chagas website at chagas.ie, or you can listen on Apple and Google Podcasts as well as Spotify. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe so you never miss the show. For all other updates from our beef programme, keep an eye on our Twitter and Facebook pages. Until next time, I'm Kat Trunigan and thanks for listening.